open the uh, November 21st <coughs> business meeting of the town board. I stand to the flag. The flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Public be heard. Jenny Curry, first one up. <laughs> 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 I wasn't really planning to Over here, Jenny, Over so here, you can Jenny. get on the camera. Hmm. About to stand up. Stand Very straight. I <laughs> <laughs> don't listen to him. There you go. It's not a square. Two minutes. It's like a screen test. Well, a minute 30 now. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Having had absolutely no prep time whatsoever. Um, a, a group of Airbnb owners, of which I am a, an example, who live in Woodstock. Um, we are talking about being represented and showing our faces and explain why we feel it's really important to allow Airbnb under certain regulated circumstances to be allowed to continue in this town. My parents bought property here. They're artists. They both moved here in the 1940s. And I have just recently inherited the family property. And I'm an artist, and I teach at the Woodstock School of Art. I would not be able to keep my family homestead in any way whatsoever because of the property taxes if I did not have Airbnb. It is maybe allowing me to just break even. And it's an incredible thing for me to be able to have. All my neighbors are cool with it. I keep you know, everything under wraps and very quiet and only have considerate guests. And if people who are right on premises like I am, I'm right next door to the cabin, if we're allowed to be able to keep the place and simply pay our taxes and our heat bill, that's all I want. One little place <laughs> to keep me going. That's it. And I'm a nice person. I'm not going to hurt anybody, <laughs> upset anybody, or keep them up at night. Thank you. So, can I just ask? So, so you're present when you rent? Hmm? Yes. You're present. It's on, my property. It's on your property. So, those, those types of uh, B and Bs or short-term rentals are permitted in town. They are supposed to be have a, a permit and be inspected. Mm -hmm. but they're legal. Mm -hmm. um, so that isn't a problem. And actually, it's it's that type that we never ever get a complaint from. And what is presently not legal under our Woodstock law is where you rent out your whole house and leave. Um, those are not legal. And I have a sense that we'll probably move to even legalize those to some degree. Uh, although I can't speak for the board, but I'm guessing, you know, I've heard everybody express at one point or another how we're not Nobody is, nobody is moving to outlaw them altogether. We, we're looking for a balance and, re and regulation. And somebody to supervise to make sure they're not irritating the neighbors. That's one yeah. of the main things. One well, of the things that's, that, yeah. that's the biggest complaint. Of course. Yeah. Yeah. One, of the, one of the things that's come up is, is just having somebody local, say you live in the city and you have this home that you're renting out once in a while, just have somebody local yeah. present that can be there. Sorry, Richard. Yeah, what's no, the problem? Uh, I think Richard, well, Richard, Richard first. Oh, okay. I don't care. Uh, there'll be in December, uh, the Airbnb committee that we would, I've been working with will be making a report to the town board uh, about this. And we'll let, you know, you'll know in advance. You know, it's not, we're not telling the town board what to do. That's up to the town board. But we've been studying for the last couple of months. And what Bill just said is basically where we're heading. So, yeah. Well, I was uh, right. You know, for a change. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. For a cha it happens rarely, but it happens. <laughs> 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 the issue we've That's true, but it's on film now. <laughs> with the short-term rentals not being present, and just, you know, anything can happen under those of conditions, course. and it does. Absolutely. The garbage is all over. It's noisy. If that was I my mean, neighbor, I'd be pissed, too. Yeah, yeah so, I mean, we yeah. love people like you who are there, present, watching. You know, we're not out to stop, you know, those kinds of uh, rentals. We want people to stay in town full time, live here, and, and long time that... residents being able to keep their property. Right. Their so yeah, yeah. We're, we're all up. We're no, all... seriously, not no, just because yeah, it's my situation. You're exactly right. Really. Yeah. We're, we're all, all in. Old time yeah. artists and stuff, or musicians, or whomever, they get right. Just all time out. people. Just old people. <laughs> right. in general. <laughs> all, those old, all those old people who want to stay here. Yeah. yeah. No, so we're happy with people like yourself who take care of it, are there, maintain it, 
make sure people are... I mean, the only change you might see is, is a registration or something like that. Well, and technically it's supposed to be registered, now, to be registered and, now and yeah. inspected, which is, you well, know, you're going to pay a $50 fee, but you're also going to have the building inspector come out and ensure that you have a safe situation, you, you'll be better covered with your homeowner's insurance mm -hmm. because there, there'll be a sign-off on that. So, yeah. you know, there's, there'll be a trade-off for that. The other thing I would just mention, because I think there's some, a couple other Airbnbers, we have always recognized that there, there are negatives and there are real positives to the Airbnb situation. If we, all, if we thought it was just nothing but negatives, we would have moved to be more restrictive years ago. That's why we've you know, struggles with a little direction over over time. So, yeah, and if I, and if I could add, um, and the Chamber of Commerce, I know, on the Conference of Planning Committee, and Kathy and I have been hearing the different people come in, and they certainly appreciate the Airbnbers because there's a lot of uh, healthy flow of traffic into the into the town because of the Airbnbers, and so there is, as Bill says, there are plenty of plenty of positives. And, and I guess my hope to to Richard and the Conference of Planning Committee is that with the renewable, because um, each year you probably have to renew your permit, hopefully there will be a case where for those people that aren't present or those people where there are problems, that we do have reserve the right to not renew a permit. So perhaps we do have get, a, get a lot of complaints. And not in your case, but in cases where the owner's not present, where the complaints happen. In those cases, it'll be nice if we can not renew a permit for a year and say, okay, take a year off in the event. Uh, and then perhaps that people have another chance a year later but we certainly want to have a way to not renew permits for the problem properties. We want to, we want to solve the problem situations. But not your situation. We like your, your model of the way of doing it is, is what works. Do you know, Richard, when you... Um, I know Richard, yeah. Do you know, Richard, when you plan to uh, bring this forward this morning? We have a very nice PowerPoint in, in preparation. Okay. Is it going to be the first meeting or the second it's meeting? It's up to you guys, uh, but certainly that's addressed. Uh, and again, these are recommendations. This is not, what? This is not uh, the board's going to have to ultimately decide because there's probably have to be some language change in the zoning law and things like that. So there's a lot to go through. It's going to be a, a lengthy the idea process. Is, the idea is to get it in place, though, by before next season. In the next summer, you know, spring. But the initial conversation will be an important one because once once we set on a course, the lengthy process will be how to implement that course. Mm -hmm. So I, I would say that I'll plan, if, if you're going to be ready, I would plan to put it on the first meeting in December, which will be the second okay. Tuesday. Let me talk to the committee, but I think that's not a problem. And you should probably have it at the town hall or someplace bigger than here. Yeah, we can have it down at the town hall. Mm -hmm. Um, so let people yep. know that we'll be talking about it. Second, second Tuesday in December. Second Tuesday in yes. December. Check, check with me, though, check. because yeah. if they decide not to, or you can go on the website with stockny.org, click on the calendar, and they can. And that'll tell you if it's mm -hmm. going to be on there or not. Also, okay. So it could, because if he's not ready, it might be the third. No, it'll either be the second or third Tuesday in December. It just may slide to the third mm -hmm. Tuesday if they're not ready. It'll be in December. Okay, we're ready, pretty yeah. much. Thank you. Right. Next, Jackie. Uh, Sarah Meckel. I, I could just say ditto, ditto. <laughs> to everything that Jenny said. The difference is... is so that, could we. <laughs> <laughs> but just, just a, a little bit more. Um, I'm also a child of Woodstockers, have been, was born in Kingston, etc., etc. And um, came back, and I don't, I'm not in my family house, but I am in an old Woodstock house. And um, I um, have been here, oh, I have two rooms in my house, so I'm very present and I'm sharing, mm -hmm. yeah, well, I don't share my kitchen, but, you know, people are mm -hmm. very present, they sit in my living room and so on. But I do enjoy it, but I only do it twice a month, mm -hmm. I don't do it, you know, full time. Um, and again, I am depending on the income to pay my real estate taxes here mm -hmm. and my insurance and so on. Uh, I, and I, there are a number of times when I've actually come here and say, well, what am I supposed to do to get recognized? <laughs> and, uh, you know, I spoke to Mark Plate first and, and to several other people, and I'm ready for the process. We recognize you. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. This gentleman. Okay. And, Bill, could you clarify that you said that Processes already no, 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 no. Yeah, well, you know, yes, that that's correct. Right, okay. presently, the zoning law prohibits short-term rentals in a few situations. You could have a guest house or part of your house as a as a 
B and B. You, you need to register it with the building department. And there's a couple of different classifications depending on if you have one or one or two or two or more. I, I forget exactly. It's but one yes, or two or three, or three to three to five. Sorry, people. ten people. Yeah. Ten people. I um, I forget. It's called Airbnb. It's in the zone law. Airbnb. Right. I, I, Airbnb Not, home. Airbnb establishment. Right. So presently, there is a way to, to a process to do that. Right. In fact, my my secretary had uh, a section of her house where she had done it uh, and went through the process. I want to say it's forty dollars for the permit and fifty dollars for the inspect yearly inspection, or vice versa. Um, and again, it it. They come out, they do a yearly inspection, make sure your fire extinguishers are up, make sure that y your egresses are all good. So it's a, it, you, you do get a benefit from that $50 or $40 challenge. So, and that, that presently exists. So we should do that now. But, but, but isn't the clarification, though, owner present is different from owner not present. So I think what Bill's saying is well, legal today is the owner present. Correct. B &B, when you're but, renting but, out a portion. Correct. But yes. but if you're talking to, if you're a question about owner present BNB, it's it's legal in some places. If you're talking about owner not present, that's what's not legal. No, that's what's called legal. resident host. Um, you, you know. Are you renting now? I should tell you to go do it now. It, it is on a yearly basis. You should do it in January. Because the permit <laughs> runs for you. You'd have we'll to take it out. Yeah. Uh, we can do it now for January. But please do it. Can you do that here? You go, go to the building. Upstairs. 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 Upstairs, yes. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm sorry, I thought you meant it. There is no, we're going to work on a process coming up. There's going to be the process will change somewhat. Uh, but, uh, uh, where, folk, where, where folks are not present, I, I think will be far stricter. You know, we want to make sure that garbage is taken care of. We want to make sure that noise is dealt with. That there's somebody there's also available that that can deal with issues, um, and that they have house rules. You know, I've talked about it for three years now. I had one of the, the most hellish situations across from me, um, where three years ago there were people coming in every Friday night and partying. And the parties were just starting at midnight and, and escalating. And they didn't invite you? Oh, I went up there a couple of times. And told them to be <laughs> <I'm invited. laughs> Finally, the, the property owner said, you need to stop going up there. You're scaring my, my, my renters. I said, there were 20 of them. <laughs> um, he then changed his rules and, and enforced them to where there's, it's, I don't even know that there are people there. So um, there's a way to do it, and that's what we're looking for. We're not we, looking to ban them. We also, you know, Sarah and Jenny, I know, have been here a long time too. There's also looking at something. How do you balance this? Because uh, in terms of people who want to be here, but there's an affordability question. Uh, there's a lack of housing, lack of apartments. Uh, uh, that used to be on the market for year-round rents uh, uh, for young people, for seniors, whatever. They're basically moving off the market now. So how do you get this balance back so we can have a diverse community uh, that encourages young people to stay here and can afford to stay here, but also allow homeowners to make you know, some money too and help pay our taxes? Mm -hmm. yeah, so that's the balance we're trying to strike. Okay. Anyone else, Jackie? No. Nope. Nope. Okay. We're good. I just want to uh, hold up this wonderful plaque. It's from New York State Association of Conservation Commissions. It is an award that the Woodstock Environmental Commission received this year for their carbon neutral initiative. So I just want to thank them and um, show the public they are doing great work. And we'll have to, I'm looking around, there's not a lot of space on the walls. So we'll have to find some place where we can uh, stick it up here. So. WEC, congratulations and thank you. Thank you to the people on the WEC. You know, they don't get a lot of notoriety, but they all work really hard keeping us, you know, informed about all the new regulations and what we can do to improve our environment. So I thank Mary Burke and David. Well, and if you're going to start and mentioning we, names. Better mention them all now because I can't remember. Mary Burke, them. David Gross, Jim Hansen, Julia Blaylock, Grace Vaughn, and Ann Brantz. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you very much. It's a great group. Yes. Um, so, we were to have a presentation from East Bright about uh, solar 
and a solar array on the landfill. They um, canceled at the last minute yesterday. I think in their calculations when they were going over it, they were having a hard time uh, placing enough panels to make it feasible to use that site. Part of the problem is it's only single phase. The, the triple phase only goes up about uh, within two miles of it, and that's the line they need for transmission. So that's been put off. We had a lengthy conversation about possibilities, and they're going to go back and, and take another look at the site. And maybe in the near future, they'll come back with something else. In the meantime, they are moving forward with a possible deal over on the Sorgates landfill, and that could be something that the town could take advantage of. They're going to be looking for uh, at least one big user to anchor that site. So when they move forward with that, maybe we can uh, consider it. Um, so we have no public hearing, so I've got some resolutions here. Be it resolved to set minutes for meetings held on <coughs> October 17th, November 9th, November 14th, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be it resolved to accept the town clerk's report. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be it resolved to authorize transfer, per, transfers per transfer sheet. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Be it resolved to authorize payment of audited vouchers in the amount of $701,205.03. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Be it resolved to hire Timothy W. Keefe as a laborer for the Woodstock Water and Sewer Department at an hourly rate of $20 effective November 27, 2017. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's a little bit of housekeeping. I thought we had done this, but um, I, I, actually I'm pretty sure we have, but I didn't get a chance to, to look back through the minutes. So I'm going to offer this motion. It's for Arbor Day. And it's something we have to do to maintain our uh, membership in the Tree City um, group. Whereas in 1872, J. Sterling Morton proposed the Nebraska Board of Agriculture that a special day be set aside for the planting of trees. And whereas this holiday called Arbor Day was first observed with the planting of more than one million trees in Nebraska. And whereas Arbor Day is now observed throughout New York, the nation, and the world, and whereas trees can reduce the erosion of our precious topsoil by wind and water, cut heating and cooling costs an average of $39 per tree per year, remove 261 pounds of pollutants each year per tree, <clears throat> produce life-giving oxygen, remove 24 tons of carbon dioxide each year per tree, and provide, provide habitat for wildlife. And whereas trees are a renewable resource, giving us paper, wood for our homes, fuel for our fires, and countless other wood products. And whereas trees in our city increase property values, enhance the economic vitality of business areas, and be beautify our community. And whereas trees, wherever they are planted, are a source of joy and spiritual renewal. Therefore, be it resolved, the Woodstock Town Board does hereby proclaim Friday, April 28, 2017, to be recognized as National Arbor Day in the town of Woodstock and urges all its residents to celebrate every Arbor Day and to support efforts to protect our trees and woodlands. Be it further resolved to urge all citizens to plant new trees and maintain and care for our existing trees, so to gladden the hearts and promote the well-being of this and future generations. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 This is another resolution. I was kind of waiting for some feedback from DOT, but um, Laura and I met with them and Mike and Clayton. We looked at crosswalks. And um, we have talked about this, the, the two spots where we might be hopeful of getting one is in front of the town hall and then one down by Pine Grove Street over towards the meat market. Uh, the other thing that we talked about was that the, the, uh, the bridge right across from uh, Library Lane, uh, the abutment typically has not uh, permitted parking there because to walk the sidewalk, you have to kind of go out and around. Um, I think at one point there were signs there, now they're not. So we talked about getting signage, and of course the DET, DOT um, wants a letter requesting that they look into that. So um, I'm going to offer this resolution. Be it resolved to authorize the supervisor to forward a request to the New York State DOT 
requesting they review the possible inst installation of crosswalks at the Woodstock Town Hall and at the Pine, and Pine Grove Street in 212, and further that they look at the installation of no parking signage by the bridge abutment across from Library Lane. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. And, and I'm very pleased, as people know, I've been very interested in the crosswalks. And this is, uh, this is kind of the first phase, is for us to proceed, we do need the DOT to, to come to go on record. We need to go on record requesting this, and the DOT will then go on record saying, yes, they agree that's a possible place. And from there, we can do the architecture, uh, the drawings, the architecture work, and then from there, hopefully get their approval to actually do it. So okay. um, it's nice to get this on, formally on the record. Okay, I'm going to offer two more resolutions. Be it, be it resolved to accept the resignation of Judge Frank Engel, effective November 30th, and be it further resolved to thank Judge Engel for his many, many years of excellent service. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Be it resolved to appoint Jason Lesko to fill the open court judge position, effective December 1st. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Uh, Anybody I, have any comments? Well, I do. I do. Good choice. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do want. We to had, we had, choice. we had some, we had a number of excellent candidates, um, and uh, it's nice to see so many smart, intelligent people coming out and wanting to offer public service. And uh, we did not have an easy task, um, but I think we we landed with an excellent choice. Yeah, so. I, and I agree. Uh, I want to make that point as well that we were. We were very blessed to have excellent candidates. Uh, there, there, are, there are several people that we talked with who could have done the job, and we were blessed with the situation to choose who could do the job best. And we even had a lot of discussion because the, because the candidates were very good. So I want to thank all the candidates that threw their hat in the ring. Uh, there was a lot of deliberation. I, I feel that we, we are making a great choice for Woodstock, but certainly thank you to everybody because it was a difficult decision based on the quality of the candidates that came forth. We had several that could have done the job and several that could have done a great job. Um, so, so here we are. Okay. I, I wanted to say that you know I felt that uh, Mr. Lesko not only has all the uh, knowledge he needs, but he also had the compassion that we're looking for in a judge. And I was really uh, pleased that, that he came for an interview. I'm thrilled we uh, hired him. I agree. This was a, t this was a tough decision. I um, mean, you know, uh, but I also agree with what Kathy just said about, about Jason. Uh, people should remember, though, this is for one year. Uh, he has to run next year uh, in an election. So, uh, and, he, and, and if he, if chooses, he chooses to run, he choose, yeah. wh whoever chooses to run and wins, it will be a, for a four-year term starting uh, 2019. Mm -hmm. So he is, he'll be in for a year and a month. Mm -hmm. so, and he has to go to school next month. He has he to go to school. He has a, cho he has a yeah, choice of going, going to school. He, but he, he assured us he would be going. He has to, yeah. And um, the class is December 11th. To the fifteenth, so. And you'll be notifying them tomorrow or something. I will be. Okay. Mm -hmm. Any questions? Any comments, Jackie? No. Announcements. Okay. Announcements. You got announcements? No, I was just going to thank all the folks for the maintenance. I think you were out there. The Christmas tree went up on the green. Christmas tree went up. Looks good. So and it's you. a beauty. It's a beauty. It's a beauty. So my wife will decide that. <laughs> let me let me She's tell you. Uh, she there. better say it's a beauty. Let me just say that the first person to complain is heading up the uh, <laughs> committee for next the year. committee for next year. Yes. <laughs> no, it is a gorgeous tree. What do you think of it, Lauren? I, I haven't seen it. It's gorgeous. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you are. Uh, Councilman-elect, do you have any comments or announcements or anything that you'd like to make? No, uh -huh. I'm just saying that, uh, that I think your choice of judge, he was he was uh, very qualified and the most Woodstock. Oh. Okay. Thank you. We'll tell him to wear tie-dye. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't tell anybody. No. <laughs> okay. He's quite professional. <laughs> 
All right. Well, I just, well, I just wanted to uh, mention one thing. So I was at the library meeting. Um, and I know Nick was there as well. I didn't get my times yet this week to see your article. But the library meeting was very interesting uh, where they had done the library survey. And I went as not a liaison. I had no official position being there, but I just thought I'd share since I went and it's pretty important stuff. Did they report the results for They They did. They reported, okay. they reported the results. And it was interesting. They had, uh, and I don't think I have it with me, but they had six choices on the survey. And one was do nothing, one was, um, you know, one was a total rebuild, they had one was just do repairs, there were three renovation choices, the low price, the medium price, the high price, so, so the highest price choices were a total rebuild and a high price renovation, then there was a medium price renovation, a low price renovation, there, then there was repairs and then there was nothing. So the only mandate that I believe they had out of it was let's go fix it because the percentages were small to do nothing and to just repair it. But the, um, but the greatest, but it was only 29%, was rebuild and the moderate renovation. And then some people looked at the numbers and said, well, but if you add all the renovations, we really want a renovation. Some people looked at the numbers and said, yeah, but if you want the high price solution that gives us the greatest square footage, you, you, you know, if you add those people together, which is the big reno biggest renovation and new. So, so what, I had, well, what I had said at the meeting was, I think that they should, now that they've got the two biggest choices, which was mid-price renovation and rebuild, and, and other people also said, we need to know more about those choices. And, and I personally believe that they should then ask people again, give a little more detail of the two choices. Because I think the, fir I think the first survey was excellent in narrowing down the choices. And it was a mandate, I believe, that they should be doing something. But I didn't see a mandate of what they should do out of that. But at least I think they had a mandate of doing something. And then it would be nice if they then do come out with a second thing saying, okay, we've taken out the choices that had the least votes. Let's look at the, what most people want and decide from there. Because, um, and that's what my hope is. But the other thing I wanted to say is their next meeting is going to be December 7th. I think that's the, not the normal time that they have it, but because it's the holiday month. Um, December 7th is going to be their, um, their, their next meeting. So be on the lookout, and they'll have more deliberations then. So they didn't, they didn't vote on a choice at the, at the meeting that I attended, um, but they're going to be having more deliberations about next steps and everything. Thank you, Bill. Well, I, I don't totally agree with you. I think they have quite a bit. You know, this quite, is really. Quite a bit came out. This is and really. And I think the library should make a choice. That's yes. my point. This is really a library issue. I, I mean, it's, it, it's, library. it's, it's really yeah. not something that we yeah. should be talking about. Um, well, we should, yeah, we shouldn't be telling them what to do for sure. Yes. No. Move to adjourn. Exactly. Wait, wait, wait. Oh. I just wanted to report the percentage of people who voted for number three, which was the moderate. We're, we're adjourned. <laughs> if you want to. 43%. 43, thank you. Thank you, Harold. Um, Second. Okay. Ready? In favor? Aye. 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 Oh, and Howard, I read your emails. I read all your emails. Your long emails and your short emails. <laughs> but thank you for writing.